We invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventure. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, in your last letter, you ask why I don't write any more about the my antique business. Well, to tell you the truth, the business is a slowdown. <laughs> it's a worse than a slowdown. It's a stop. <laughs> Maybe the reason my little stories are no good is because in this country, everybody is to buy things in a big department store. I'm a think even if you want to buy a little store, you've got to go to a big department store. <laughs> And they got a refrigerator, the pianos, the suits, the food, the toys, everything. And I'm even here that the one a famous American, a Jack Benny, he's a got his wife from the make company. <laughs> anyway, Mamma Mia, after more than one year in my store, I'm a sold most of my antiques, but I'm a got no money to buy new antiques. Only antique I'm a got left is my Polo Revere silver plate. It's really beautiful. You know who Polo Revere was. He was that famous American jockey. <laughs> this great patriot. He's running around on his horse, a hollering, the British are coming. One if by land, two if by sea. Mamma mia. Imagine how weak this country was. Paul Revere should have made such a fuss about the one or two British soldiers. <laughs> anyway, I'm a sitting here worrying about the, my business when the door is open up and I feel a big wind coming in. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. Well, my little pumpkin head. <laughs> Your business is picking up? No, Pasquale, he's laying down. <laughs> That's just what I thought. How do you expect to make a living in this broken down old junk shop? Pasquale, is it not all a junk shop? Ah, look at all this stuff. Who's going to buy this old harp from you? Nobody. And I myself saw with my own ears how you give a lady $40 for it. <laughs> Pasquale, I knew this lady. Her husband, he was a very fine musician until he got sick. Uh, you soft heart, the soft head. <laughs> what are you going to do with the harp? A slice of hard boiled legs? <laughs> I suppose you're going to become a millionaire with that dirty Paul Revere silver plate you got in the window. Pasquale, have a respect for Paul Revere. You don't know this, but a Paul Revere was one of the greatest silversmiths in his country. I know, I know. So what? So he's a ride around his horse all day, and he's a yellow high old silver. <laughs> I don't know. Look who's going to teach me geography. <laughs> Pasquale, you mean a history. History, eh? Luigi, when a horse is a run, does he hiss or does he jog? <laughs> well, he's a jog. Then it's geography. <laughs> Luigi, I'm going to come in here to make you feel bad. I'm going to come in here with a proposition to take all of your troubles off of your hands. Really, Pasquale? What? Well, you don't have to sell anything. I'm offering you what they call in America good old-fashioned horse trade. Horse trade? That's right. I take your store, you take my daughter Rosa. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm a no one to trade. You keep your horse. <laughs> Make me mad. Listen to your stupid business man of you. I'm going to tell wait, you... Wait, wait. Mamma mia, customer. 
Uh, excuse me, lady. Is there something I can do for you? Are you the proprietor? <laughs> yes, sir. Um. Well, I was passing by and I saw that plate in your window with the sign Genuine Paul Revere Plate. Tell me, is it a genuine Paul Revere? Lady, if it was a no genuine, I would have a sign that's a say fake of Paul Revere. <laughs> Ooh! Lady, believe with this man, this is a Paul's plate. You see how bumpy it is? That's because Paul is a maker while he's a riding on his horse. <laughs> Lisa Pasquale, I take care. No? What are you asking for it? Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars for a Paul Revere plate? A fifteen? Fifteen? Please, lady, it's no use to bargain. Ten dollars is my last offer. Ten dollars? Oh, but that price is simply couldn't be a genuine Paul Revere plate. Lady, I'm going to give you my word. It's a genuine Paul Revere. Look, you see the marks on this plate? That's where his horse is eaten from. <laughs> Lady, since I'm in a business, I'm a never lie. As it happened, I'm going to buy this plate accidentally from a junker man for five dollars. Five dollars? Why, I paid two hundred dollars for a genuine Paul Revere plate. Lady, like they say in America, somebody is a saw you coming. <laughs> And I'm a don't the one that people should say in my store, you was a went, too. <laughs> oh, don't mind him. He's just a come from Italy. He's still a wet between the ears. <laughs> well, he certainly has a long way to go before he learns to become a businessman. Goodbye. Lady, I'm a buy this from a junkman. Ten dollars is my last offer. Since I'm in a business, I'm a never tell a lie, never tell a lie, never tell a lie. What are you, a businessman or George Washington? <laughs> Maybe you want to give me a demonstration every Tuesday to Friday night to how you chop down a cherry tree. <laughs> Pasquale, you want I should have lied to this woman? I don't care what you do. You're just a terrible business, a man. The way you talk, you couldn't even sell a straw to a drowning man. Pasquale, what the for a man who wants to drink when he's in the water? <laughs> What a big boob you are. Millions of countrymen, and I had to bring a you from Italy. Why couldn't I bring Petrillo? <laughs> Petrillo? Sure. There's a man who's make a bigger success. Every time somebody's go peep, but there's a piccolo, he's get a penny. <laughs> Pasquale, I know I'm a better business man, but what am I going to do? That's the way I am. That ain't a good enough in America. I'm a sick of the tired of you soft the words that are given forty dollars for a broken down a harp. I'm a washing my hands off of you and a throwing away the brillo. <laughs> Please, Please Pasquale. Furthermore, you owe me four months of rent. I want it right to now. But Pasquale, I'm a no got. To. Get. Go out to find yourself a job. Job? That's a right, a job, a G O B. <laughs> And if you don't get a job, I throw you out of the store. And when you're down and out, there's only one place you can go, the FHA. <laughs> FHA, what's that? Flopper house for aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the Pasquale is right. Maybe it's not the good of business. I should buy things like this a heart. Mm. But it sounds just so pretty. <laughs> now it's not even a good for slicing eggs. <laughs> well, it's the time to go to my night school class, and maybe my teacher, Miss Spaulding, is giving me some advice about finding a job. <laughs> All right, class. Quiet, please. Please. Now I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? I'm here. Mr. Harwood? I'm here. Mr. Olson? I'm here. Mr. Schultz? If I ain't here, there's a very good-looking fellow there in my suit. <laughs> please, please, Mr. Schultz. Now, class, I hope you've all studied the economics lesson we have for tonight. Now, who will volunteer to tell us the meaning of supply and demand? Mr. Harwood? Supply and demand. Oh, supply is things like automobiles, refrigerators, and new houses. And demand means who can afford them. <laughs> well, not quite, Mr. Horowitz. 
Uh, Mr. Schultz, would you care to try? I don't have to try. With my answer, I give a money-back guarantee. <laughs> nice to see you so confident. Well, tell us the meaning. Uh -huh. The bly, that's the husband. The man, that's the wife. <laughs> Thank you, fellow sufferers. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz, sit down. Mr. Basco, can you explain supply and demand? Well, uh, demand that's a Pasquale, supply that's a Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Basco, are you having trouble with Mr. Pasquale again? That's right. Because I'm an opera the rent he wants, I should have married Rosa. Oh, oh so, so, so now they're, they're coming out in the wash. <laughs> what wash? Rosa is the whole laundromat. <laughs> But what else did he say, Luigi? If I don't pay him the rent the money, he's going to throw me out in the street. Oh, that Pasquale. He's so tight he could squeeze two extra hours out of an all-day zucker. <laughs> Mr. Basco, what's wrong with your business? Aren't you doing well? No, Mrs. Spaulding. I'm not such a good salesman. And now Pasquale says I must go find a job. What the kind of job I'm a good for, huh? Luigi, if you want to learn how to sell, you got to go out and find yourself a job as a salesman. Oh, but Schultz, maybe Luigi, by his temperament, is not suited to be a salesman. Oh, is not puppycock. <laughs> Anybody can learn to sell. Look at me. I never sold a thing in my life till I opened up my delicatessen store. Today, there ain't a case of heartburn in the whole neighborhood that can't be traced to my salon. <laughs> But uh, Schultz, Schultz, I can't make somebody buy what they don't want. Luigi, Schultz is right. You got to adjust yourself. You're living in a country, America, where everything is competition. And if you don't learn to sell, 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 you can't exist. Everything is salesmanship. Everything? Yes. Yep. Without salesmanship, we would all be bachelors. <laughs> Schultz. Sure, Sam, I don't think I can be a salesman. Mr. Basco, it may be difficult for a man like you to see yourself as a salesman, but remember, some of our greatest men started that way. Why, our own president... That's right, that's right, Harry S. Truman. <laughs> S for salesmanship and socks. <laughs> look, look how far he went. For the next three years, he don't have to worry about selling neckties. <laughs> well, uh... Well, that's right. The President of Truman was a salesman. Sure. And so was President Wilson. President Wilson, what's he sell? You never heard of Wilson's ham? <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Luigi. And don't forget Hoover with his vacuum cleaner. <laughs> well, sure, that's right. And look at that famous cowboy, Wild Bill Hickok. Made a fortune, selling suspender. <laughs> Wait. Class, maybe you're right. If it's the American way to be salesman, then I'm going to be a salesman. I'm going to sell, sell, sell. Now you're talking, Luigi. This is the help of my antique business. I become a bigger man. I advertise like a big company. In a subway, on the billboards, in the magazines, in the newspapers. Is there going to be a picture of a two beautiful girls are holding antiques? And underneath it to say, which a twin has got the Basco? <laughs> And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, your son of Luigi has been thinking a lot and a lot. When I'm a first to come over from Italy, I thought I'm opening up a nice store, I have a finer trade, the honest prices. If a lady wants a Paula Revere plate, then she's a buy. I'm a no half to push her down her throat. <laughs> But over here is not the so. Everything is a what they call a high-pressure salesmanship. They got a man, and he's dressed in a white the coat. There's a ride around in the streets, a ringing a little bell, and a laughing like a hyena. <laughs> in Italy, we put him in a crazy house. <laughs> over here, he's a seller of ice cream. 
Mamma mia, it's a scare me to be like this. But I'm a not going to be salesman. So I'm a sitting in my store looking at the harp. And I'm wondering when a Pasquale is going to throw me out. When the door is open up. Luigi, my fellow boober. <laughs> Hello, Schultz. Luigi, don't look so bad. Sheer up. Smile. <laughs> Remember, behind every dark cloud is a little sunshine biscuit. <laughs> So what am I got to smile about? Oh, Luigi, your troubles is over. I got your job. Job? But what kind of job? A vacuum cleaner salesman. Yeah. <laughs> Frimp Clyde Binder vacuum cleaners. Frimp Clyde Binder? Yeah, yeah. You get $30 for every vacuum cleaner you sell. And you get to keep everything you find in the bag. <laughs> But a shirt, so how am I going to sell a vacuum cleaners? Ach, Luigi, sheer up. They'll teach you to sell. They got a special school for that. I bet in two days you'll be a cracker jack salesman. Cracker jacks? I thought it was a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Luigi, you get me all for shimmers. <laughs> Now, look, 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 here. Here's the address from that company. You go down there and they're going to teach you how to sell. Oh, well, all right, the Schultz. Oh, and Luigi, don't be so frightened. Sheer up! <laughs> Remember what they say. A brave man dies only once. A coward dies a thousand times. And who can afford so much funeral expense? <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta go now, Luigi. <laughs> Goodbye. And <On> smile. <laughs> oh, oh, my rheumatism is killing <laughs> Luigi Basco, vacuum cleaner salesman. Mamma mia, I'm going to learn to sell a vacuum cleaners, and I'm going to be such a big salesman. American people, they're going to elect me president. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, men. I always choke up inside when I hear the Frim Clyde Binder graduation song. <laughs> now, next in our program, Mr. Basco will recite the Frim Clyde Binder loyalty pledge. Mr. Basco. All right. I faithfully promise to take care of my Frim Clyde Binder vacuum cleaner. Tank a type of junior size and a bag. And as a six clean accessories and including optional sweet air attachment. And to always a tank, a sleep, and a eat the fried the clump burgers. I, I mean, a, I mean a clump. Uh, very, it, very, I mean... very, very, very well, Mr. Basco. <clears throat> now, man, I'm proud of you. Each one of you has successfully completed 27 hours solo on the rug. <laughs> You Frimp Clyde Binder commandos have had a pretty tough time of it. You've been behind the nozzle steadily. And one of our number, Mr. Basco, came down with upholstery shock. <laughs> Fortunately, we pulled him through with anti-mohair serum. <laughs> Excuse me. Clyde Binder. All right, men. Today you're going out to sell. You've earned your diplomas, and as you walk out of here, you will each receive a length of hose. Be worthy of it. <laughs> All right, men, stand up. If you have any questions, ask them now. Krimkowitz, Manoshek, Shadrach, Basco. Well, I'm like to ask you. Good, no question. <laughs> All right, men, get those vacuum cleaners on your shoulders. Your success is up to you. Remember our slogan: Get that bag in the kitchen. <laughs> To cleanliness, Frim Clyde Binder is the best. Try a demonstration plug in Frim Clyde Binder will do the rest. On the road to cleanliness. Mamma mia, this is a salesmanship. <laughs> Oh, 
Mamma mia, that's the third time I'm walking on the block. Well, I'm going to ring at the bell sometime. I'm going to start to hear. I wonder how is it going to come out. Pardon me, lady. Don't want any. <laughs> I'm going to come out faster than I thought. Pardon me, I... Don't want any. Well? Excuse me, mister. I'm just the one to get to my shoe back. <laughs> yeah? Don't want any. I mean the lady... I'm... Never mind. <laughs> Mamma mia, three times I'm going to get a door slammed in my face. But I'm a can't to give up. I'm a got to be a salesman. On the road, it took Lenny Nurse. Grandpa Clyde, the binder is the best. Lady. Luigi, my friend. Hey, what's the matter with you? Your feet is a drag, your face is a flush, you perspire and a pan figure. You look like you've been in a six-a-day bicycle race without a bicycle. <laughs> Pasquale, I was a selling a vacuum cleaners. Selling a vacuum cleaners? You look like you've been fighting them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So you try to be a salesman, eh? Pasquale, please, don't make fun. I'm having enough of trouble. Every place I'm going to slam a door in my face, out of my nose, out of my feet. One lady finally lets me in the house, but I guess I'm a plug of the wire in the wrong place. Because of the lights that go out, the radios will blow up, and a tree goldfish is electrocuted. <laughs> oh, you big, stupid, greenhorn of boob. So you want to be a salesman, eh? Don't you know today salesmen don't live long? They're dropping like a flies. What do you mean? Well, pick up at a New Yorker paper. Every day you read about the death of a salesman. <laughs> so, right... Well, What's the matter with you, Luigi? Look, you still got a vacuum clean on your shoulder. Yeah, that's all right. Tomorrow I'm going to bring him back. Hey, Luigi, type of like you is always going to have a tough in America. You should be a rich man's son, a married for money, sponge off for the older man. Be what they call a hypocrite. Mr. <laughs> Pasquale, why must you... Listen, I'm not taking no for an answer. You know, Mary Rosa, you pay me my $200 of rent or I throw you out of the store with you, you broken down a harp. What do you say, my son? <laughs> well, all right, the papa. Luigi, I accept your proposal. Now we call it a little bride. Rosa! 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 Oh, papa! <laughs> yes, my little pigeon. Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Rosa, don't just stand there. Your bridegroom is tired. Why you not say something nice to him? Uh, Luigi, you want a raffle? <laughs> oh, shut up your face. Rosa, I got a good news for you. Luigi, is it... Hello, I'm interested in that Paul Revere plate in the window. How much is it? Well, uh, he was asking a ten dollars for it, but he's not interested now. He's a no salesman. No salesman. Ten dollars? Why, it can't be genuine at that price. Can't be genuine. Wait a minute. Lady, that's the place. I mean, that's the plate that's costing you two hundred dollars. What? You want it, somebody should have sell it to you. Well, I'm going to sell it to you. Just the whole of that plate in your hand, a feel of the weight. Is it worth three times the two hundred dollars? Well, it does feel quite substantial. It's a genuine applaud the Clyde the binder. I'm in a reveal. <laughs> don't hesitate, lady. Act an hour is it gonna be too late. I'm got twelve people outside of waiting to put it. Well, don't the plate. rush me. Act I... to what do you want? Do you want to be rushed? He who's a hesitate is a lose everything. Something else and nobody is a no. 
This is the only place to light to this in the whole country. Really? But $200. Lady, it cost me $190. I'm making a $10 a profit on the whole deal. Well, what do you say? Well, I'll take it. Fine. I thank you for the money. Now, tell all of your friends oh, about it. Oh, I will. Me. I will. It's a pleasure to do business yes, with you. Yes, sure. <laughs> hey, Louise. Look in your hands. At $200 a cold, a cash, and boy, you really put a one over. And with such a straight a face, you tell her it's the only place in the country. <laughs> you paid $190 for it. <laughs> hey, Luigi, that's the way to get a rich. That's the matter, Luigi. That's the way to get rich, huh? I'm going to put the one over. Hey, lady. Lady, wait. Luigi, where you going? I'm not going to give back the money. Lady. But why? Luigi, you should have been proud of yourself. Proud of myself. Sure. Now you're a big salesman. Yes, sir, Pasquale. I'm a big salesman. But now I'm just beginning to hate to myself. What? Lady. Hey, lady, wait. Hey, lady. Hey, lady. Mama Bosco, I'm going to warn you should miss your mail, but your son Luigi is still looking for a certain party, and he's not come back yet. I'm going to sew this letter in the store, so I'm going to finish it for him. You know, something big has happened to your son today, Mama Bosco. He's not to get hit by a truck. He's going to have an accident. It's something that's happened to him on the inside. Today, your son is almost to become like a... Well, he's almost a change into a... Well, it's a harder to explain, uh, but your son, Luigi, is the same like he always was. And I think I like it, a little cabbage head like that. <laughs> Don't you worry about his paying the rent. I'm going to buy something very important from him. It's a cost to him $190, uh, and I'm going to pay him a 200 It's a harp. Yes, old antique. Hundreds of years ago, a sick musician's wife sold it for $40. I'm lucky to get it, you know? Well, goodbye, Mama Bosco. I'm proud to say I'm a friend of that little pumpkin ahead of you loving his son, Luigi Bosco, the little immigrant. <laughs> Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conried as Schultz, and Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding. Music is under the direction of Lynn Murray. Life with Luigi will be heard again two weeks from tonight at the same time. Next week, this half hour will be included in the time devoted to the CBS Documentary Unit's latest production, The People's Choice, starring Ralph Bellamy. Now appearing as the star in Sidney Kingsley's latest hit on Broadway, Mr. Bellamy will come to CBS to play a freshman congressman whose career might be that of any of your Washington representatives. CBS cordially invites you to hear The People's Choice, starring Ralph Bellamy at this same time next Sunday over most of the same CBS network stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.